your what? Hallelujah, everybody said. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about something that we all have experienced and need more of, and that's hope. I want to talk to you about having hope in a hopeless situation. And uh, Christ is here for us because he can break every chain. Christ can do what we can't do. Amen. So in Mark chapter 5, I'll begin reading. And uh, understand in chapter 4, Jesus just came through a horrific storm. An incredible storm. And it says in verse 1 of chapter 5, And they came unto the other side of the sea into the country of Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwellings among the tombs, and no man could bind him nor with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken into pieces, neither could any man tame him. So they put him on his feet, put him on his hands, they talked with him to no avail. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he came and worshipped him. Now he didn't bow down to acknowledge him as Lord and Savior, but he did bow down and say, I know your Lord and I know that you're deity. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thy Son of the Most High God? I, I adjure thee. By God that thou tornest, torn me, me not. And he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Now, you notice the demons don't have a problem believing in Jesus, nor bowing. It's not demons, it's the unbelief in man that is the problem. And he asked him, uh, What is your name? Now, it wasn't as though Jesus didn't know his name, but we're going to come back to that. And he said, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he sought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was these nine to the mountains, a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us unto the swine that we may enter unto them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000. That's what a legion is. Two to 6,000. There were 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Actually, they committed suicide is what happened. And uh, some of y'all get that next week. And, and they had fled. Thank you, Spencer. You're always there for me. And they that fed the swine. Swine, swine, I'm cracking myself up a little bit here. We're the only two laughing, that's a problem. You know what I'm anyway, and they fed the swine, fled, and towed it to the city and in the country, and they went out to see what was done. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil that had the legion sitting and clothed and in the right mind, and they were all afraid. And they that saw it told how it befell him, and how he was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray to him to depart out of their coast. Can you imagine a guy being delivered, and they said, Jesus, we'd appreciate you leave. Like the little talk, appreciate the little miracle. Now, to Lou, we'd like for you to ease on. And he came unto the ship, and... They that had been possessed with the devil prayed that, what? That he might be with him. Notice the difference. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go unto thy friends and tell them the great things the Lord hath done unto thee, and hath compassion on thee. Now in Mark chapter 5, we can call this the Bible home of incurables. And the reason why I call it that is because there's three cases in this chapter but we'll only talk about one. First of all, we talked about the demonic man here. And that's incurable. Humanly speaking, it's incurable. 
And then if you read on, when you go home, you'll find about a diseased woman, a woman who had an issue of blood for 18 years, did everything but could not be healed. And then as you read on in chapter 5, you'll find out there was a dead girl. So we have a demonic man, a diseased woman, and a dead girl, all incurable. All of these we would have considered impossible in the Lord's day as well as in our day to heal, to fix. For instance, the demonic man we would suggest to go to a mental institution. Can't help you here. The diseased woman we'd said, you know, you need to go to a terminal care unit. We've done all we can do. And the dead girl, of course, we would have grieved, but we would have carried her somewhere and buried her in a cemetery. But when you move through this fifth chapter of the book of Mark, you'll discover that Jesus is more than adequate for every situation. There are no incurables when it comes to Jesus. I don't care who you are or what you are. Jesus is there for you. So in every situation, here we see that Jesus was more than adequate. When he met the demonized man, we see he's the great psychiatrist. He fixed this man. When you look at the woman with the disease, he was the great physician. He healed her. And the pediatrician, we find out with the dead girl, that's what Jesus was. Now, nobody in today's time would be able to do anything with these situations, but we're not just talking about anyone. We're talking about Jesus. And I don't know what you're going through or what you're struggling with, but it's not too big for him. As a matter of fact, that's what he just communicated to you. I'm over the living, I'm over the dead, and I'm over the in-between. I am in control, and I can give you hope when you think you're hopeless. But now I want us to focus our attention on the terminology of a legion. This man, and for all intended purposes, this man was considered dead. He really was this demon. I mean, he was dead. He was the walking dead, but nevertheless, he was dead. And this man was an outcast. I mean, they'd hear, You know, in the tombs, when they buried you, they didn't bury you in the ground back then. They buried you in tombs inside of caves. And we know the reverberation that takes place in caves. And they would hear him scream and yell. And they would watch him cut himself. And they would try to sneak in up on him and, and restrain him as in order to help him. But he would break all the chains. And it was just a crazy, crazy, crazy situation. This man was an outcast from his family as well as society. He was a living dead man. That is until Jesus showed up and everything changed. Amen. Now I want you to keep in mind the context here. Jesus has just come through a storm. He said, now guys, listen. You know when I said stop to the water and the wind and the waves and it did? See, I, I'm in control over all creation except you. You bunch of hard-headed guys. I tell creation what to do and it does it. But the unbelief in you keeps me from breaking in on your life. So I want you to learn. I calm the storm. Now just like I calmed an outward storm... And I am powerful over it. I want to calm your inner storms. I want to I do on the inside of you what I just did on the outside that you had seen. I'm big enough. So Jesus calmed the storm. And now Jesus is coming through a storm to get to this maniac. Jesus will come through some stuff to get to you. Amen. Uh, we sing there's not a wall he won't knock down. There's not a mountain he won't climb. There's not ways that he won't go through. Coming after me. Coming after me. Coming after me. Jesus said, this man is so important that I'm going to go through a horrific storm to meet his needs. That's just like my Jesus. No matter what it takes to reach me. This passage teaches us. That whether we are faced with storms or demons or disease or death, he can handle it. He is there for us. Think about this man who was isolated. He is in desperation. And here he is. Everybody has done everything possible to help him but to no avail. His only companions was a bunch of greys. Oh, and by the way, some demons. Isn't that good company? That I'm surrounded by people who are dead and demons who are tormenting me. Well, that's the way it was until Jesus walked in and he changed everything. And as we watch the Lord Jesus Christ do something in this man's life, the same God that did it back then can do it again. Amen? 
Now listen, if God can't do what I just preached about, we just gave a bunch of money, we got some good cold air, and we're wasting a lot of time being here, so we might as well just get up and leave and go home if He can't. But if He can, and by the way, He can... It would behoove all of us to believe that He never changes. He's the immutable God. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we even asked or think. Amen? Give Him praise. Don't worry about the person next to you. Give Him praise this morning. God can do it this morning. And He wants to do it through your life. So He says, here's a story so you can see what I can do in your life. And so what I want to do is talk about this man who was a savage. He had a problem. The devil was controlling him. The devil was his master. The Bible says he had an unclean spirit. And so Jesus went to talk to this man. And he said, what is your name? Now it's amazing that the evil spirits knew that that was Jesus. They didn't... uh, haggle about that they didn't discuss that they knew it was Jesus and they said Jesus but Jesus looked at that man now stay with me he says who are you what's your name and there was a pause there was a pause and Jesus says what is your name and there was a pause and the demon spoke up The demon said, I am legion. He said, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to this man. I want to know what your name is. I want to ask you Christians something in here. Have you forgotten who you are? When you're in your struggle, when you're in your depression, when you're hurt, and when you're down, does Satan see the Jesus in you that should be in you? Do you speak with authority And do you say, I'm a Christian, I'm a child of the living God, and nothing will overcome me, nothing will destroy me, and I will make it out? Or will you just look like that man who has forgotten who he was? There's a lot of Christians who have forgotten who they were. So the demon said, if you won't speak up, I'll speak through you. I'm legion. There's many of us. There's about 2,000 of us. And Jesus looked at him and he didn't say, okay, Legion, you come out. He said, I'm not even going to talk to you. Get out of him. And he had to leave. Isn't it amazing that a lot of times we're faced with situations and we just stare and we feel so hopeless and so powerless when God wants us to be victorious? This man had a problem. He had over 2,000, 2,000 demons in him. Wow, that's, that's, that's insane. I mean... Human beings can go through some stuff and keep going, huh? We, we just like misery a lot. Like, if it's bad, make it worse. I don't know what's wrong with us. Instead of it's bad, God, take it from us. It's like, well, I'm going to fight it out, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. Instead of giving it to Jesus, quit fighting and say, I am hopeless, but God, you are my hope. Come into my life and save me. Change this situation. Change my environment. Why don't we do that? Why don't we do that? The, these, these pigs said, I can't handle these demons. I, I, I'm going to go kill myself. I'm going to go kill myself. And these swine ran off and they, they went into the water. And, 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 and I just think about, does Satan recognize God in my life? I mean, I'm in church, but does Satan recognize God in my life? In, in Acts chapter 19, he said this. He said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? See, you ought to be known in hell. He said, I know Paul. When Paul starts praying and Paul starts walking, he's under the authority of God. We've done battle with Paul. Paul, we put him in prison. We've shipwrecked him. We've stoned him. We lied on him. We cheated on him. We've done everything. That boy's like a bad habit. He keeps coming back. Now, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? You see, Satan will not obey anything you tell him if you're walking in your authority. But if you'll get under the authority of God and His Word, whatever God says you can do, you can do. Whatever God's Word says you can be, you can be. And whatever God's Word says you can have, you can have. Satan, you're not going to steal my family. You're not going to steal my kids. You're not going to steal my job. You're not going to do all that. Now, God, if you wish for something to take place, whatever your will is, is fine. But I want to recognize His authority. Come out of Him. That's the mission that Christ wants to accomplish today in your life. He wants to expel the evil spirits from you and leave us 
clothed and in her right minds. He had a problem. He was in the tombs and chains. Notice his pain. I'm telling you, these demons that controlled him drove him away from the living and he spent his life in cemeteries. In cemeteries. Isn't it hard for you and I to comprehend that someone can get that down in sin to where it goes from just having a good mind and a logical mind to losing your mind and losing control of your life? You see, lost people hate things that are pertaining to life. People who don't know Jesus and don't want Jesus in their life, they hate the things that pertain to light. They hate everything that has to do with God, His work, His church, His world. They shun the light and the things of God. Now, of course, man has his ways of seeking to conquer and cure the problems of the plague of humanity. We'll build jails and asylums and prisons and institutions. To hold those who manifest the outward signs of inward death. Man promotes pills and potions and psychology as the answer to man's dilemma. But the problem with man's efforts to cure his own depravity is that man's efforts only treat the symptoms. Man's efforts can never treat the cause of man's conditions. If a man's going to ever get the help that he or she needs... They must come to the Lord. Or if you don't, what we're doing today is putting band-aids over cancer. We got a problem, we just put a band-aid, a man-made solution. God says, I'm the answer, I'm the solution. Now, you know why people who are lost act and talk like they do? Do you know why they do that? Because they're lost. You know what sinners do? This is going to be a great epiphany. They sin. Me and you again. I'm going to just preach to you. They they sin. That's what sinners... And we get so enamored when sinners sin. I can't believe they sin. Well, we're all sinners by birth, by choice, and by practice. But some of us are overcoming sin. Amen? But what I want you to understand is people act the way they act because they're sinners. Lost people choose darkness over light because they hate the light. You need to look at your spiritual condition when you find reasons to avoid the light. When you can't sit through a preaching service, you have a spiritual problem. When you find reasons to avoid the house of God, you have a spiritual problem. When you find yourself longing for the ways of the world, you have a spiritual problem. When you're beginning to revert back to the ways of death and darkness, you have a spiritual problem. And we see this guy's problem and we see his pain, but he was powerless. There was nothing that he could do until Jesus walked in. So let's talk about the saving man now. We talked about the savage of this man and how savage he was. But let's talk about the saving man, Jesus. He had compassion. Everyone avoided this man but Jesus. When they saw this man, they said, oh God, here he comes. But when Jesus saw him, Jesus didn't run from him. Jesus ran to him. I'm so glad that when I was lost and undone, when everybody scratched me off and said, he's hopeless, there's no way he's going to make it, that Jesus ran to me by his love. I'm so glad that he found me and that he showed compassion toward me and that he loves me no matter what. Jesus made a special trip across the sea to brave a storm simply because he wanted to deliver this one man from the grip of Satan. I thank God for his boundless and endless compassion. I can look around this room today and I can see case after case after case of men and women that others have written off as a lost cause. But you're here and saved today because the Savior had compassion on you. He loves you in spite of your sins. And he came to where you were to deliver you from bondage that gripped your heart and life. He loved you enough to die for you on the cross. And he loves you enough today to set you free. I think about Zacchaeus in a tree. He says, I'm coming to you, boy. Matter of fact, that tree you're up in, because of my providence, I planted that a long time ago knowing you couldn't reach me, but I was going to reach you even if I had to do it through a tree. I think about Saul who hated the church and was full of destruction. He said, Saul, 
Other people hate you called Christians. But you know what? I love you enough. No longer are you going to be called Saul. You're going to be called Paul. And Paul wrote most of the New Testament epistles. The Ethiopian eunuch. He was in rebellion when it came to confusion. Religious confusion. But God saved him. And with all of our problems, God saved us. You know what I love about Jesus? He's full of compassion. And when I see you, I see your sin. And when you see me, you see my sin. But Jesus said, I don't look the way you look. I don't look at people the way you look at people. You see a drunk. You know what I see? A worship leader. You see a drug addict. You know who I see? A preacher. You see a harlot who bounces from man to man and woman to woman. But you know what I see? I see a potential life group leader. You see a businessman or a businesswoman, but you know what I see? I see a youth worker. You see a nurse and you see a doctor, but you know what I see? I see a youth minister. See, you give Jesus your Jacobs that schemes, and God will give you back Israel and a prince with God. You give Jesus a cussing preacher named Simon, and he'll give you back a mighty preacher who's been converted. You give Jesus your souls who persecuted the church. He'll give you back a militant missionary apostle. You give Jesus back yourself and it's no telling what he would do in your life if you placed your hands and your life, I'm sorry, in his hands. This guy here saw the compassion but he was confronted. Notice the confrontation. The man ran from everyone else but Jesus, he fell at his feet. These demons... That drove this man away from all the human relationships, drove him to the feet of Jesus. Isn't it amazing that some of us can't get along with anyone? No matter who you are, it just seems like you're a problem waiting to happen. Maybe you feel that way. Maybe you feel like there's something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you. I want to tell you, Satan will fill your mind and make you think you don't measure up. You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not wise enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not skinny enough. You're not big enough. You're not intelligent enough. But he is a liar. You need to confront that evil spirit that keeps telling you who you are. And you need to confront it and say, I am what he said I am. I am a child of God. I am a royal priesthood. I am a conqueror. I am what Christ says I am. you got to confront it. Jesus confronted that evil spirit and you got to confront your evil spirits. You need to tell that problem, that addiction, that anger, that bitterness, that spirit that keeps coming at you. You need to confront it so it will fall down at the feet of Jesus. I want to tell you something. He confronted The demons acknowledged his deity. And the demons then requested that they would be cast into swine. Stay with me. And Jesus gave them permission. And I thought to myself, this passage teaches us some truths. Number one, it teaches us that spirits are subjected to the Lord's authority. You know that there's only so many spirits. And uh, they can't like have intimacy and produce more spirits. What demons and devils there are, they will always be. And do you know that those demons and devils are territorial? They are not omnipresent. The Holy Spirit can be here and be in California, be in your heart and be in my heart. But demons are territorial. That's why you need to make sure they're not in your house. That's why you need to make sure. You see, when you walk into someone's presence, sometimes your God on the inside of you disturbs the demon on the inside of them. But demons don't run off. They stay territorial. That's why they said, just cast us into these swine. And they ran and killed the swine. They stayed in their area. But it taught me something. I said, there had to be some cows. There had to be some donkeys, some sheep, some goats. Why did they go into swine? And I thought the degradation of sin. How far sin takes people. Now I want you to think and get a picture in the theater of your mind as I begin to explain what I just questioned about. Here it is, the angels are in heaven and they're worshiping God and they're having a great time. And they're loving Jesus and they're worshiping Jesus and they're calling out to Jesus and all of a sudden they say, we're tired of worshiping you. We want you to worship us. And they fail one third from heaven. Oh, but it didn't stop there. They got into man. 
And now they caused all kind of problems and havoc in our world through man. But they didn't stop there because sin takes you farther than you want to go. It costs you more than you want to pay and it keeps you longer than you want to stay. Now they're in the swine. Sin takes you all the way down. Can you imagine being physically in the presence of Jehovah God and now becoming a demon in a swine? And that's what happened. And you say, oh, that's a good story, and I, we believe that to be true, but that happened to the demons. I'd never, I'd never end up that low in sin. I'd stop before I got that low, but there was a prodigal. That when he got so low, he left the Father all the blessings, the fellowship, the peace, the money, the food, the happiness. And the Bible says he ended up in the pig pen, and he would have filled his belly with the husk of the swine. He got so low that he was willing to eat the feed that the pigs were eating. My friend, I want to tell you something. You've got to be careful. You've got to be careful. How many people you know who started with just one line of cocaine? Now, when they sniffed that one line, they didn't say, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to be a cocaine head and I'm going to sell everything I got and leave my wife. They never said that. They just, just one line. Oh, I, I'm just going to smoke a little mojo, a little mojo, you know, a little go with mojo, and, and it'll all be good. I'm not, I'm not going to start selling guns. I, I'm not going to rob from my parents. I wouldn't, I'd never do that. I'll just borrow this and forget to bring it back. How many times have we said, oh, I'm, look, look, see, it's not spiritual manipulation. It's not trying to condemn you. It's not trying to make you feel bad. Sin will just take you so far and bring you so low. And I want to caution you against that. I want to caution you against that because Jesus Christ does not want to see you in that situation and you don't want to be in that situation. You've got to confront all of those things. But notice the command now. Every human effort that failed to deliver this poor soul from bondage, everything that tried to help could not help only Jesus. And he spoke a word, come out. When he said out, death was swallowed up in life. When he said out, darkness is driven away by light. When he said out, Satan loses his grip on the lost soul. When he says out, sin loses its power to control the sinner. If Jesus says out today, the captives will go free and sins will be forgiven and your life will be changed. That is the man that can change you today. So let's say you're the savage man. Yeah, you're not really cutting yourself physically, but emotionally you beat yourself up. And you've heard about how Jesus loves you and he, how he wants to save you. That's when you need to respond. At the end of this message, you need to say, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my life and change my soul, change my mind, change my heart, change my direction. The last point I want to share with you is not only the savageness of this man, and not only a saving man, but I want to talk about the salvation miracle. He's no longer running about crying and cutting himself. He's calm and he's seated at the feet of Jesus. Could you imagine every time you saw this guy, he was freaky? He was salivating at the mouth, acting crazy, howling like a wolf. And the next time you see him, he's sitting there closed and in his right mind. How y'all doing? If they ain't going, God, God bless you. May his face shine down upon you. May his peace fill your heart. You'd be like, what is going on? Is this guy about to whack out on me or something? I mean, what's, I mean wasn't it amazing to see? It, it's, it's that dramatic. When Christ changes you, it's that dramatic. They'll tell you, I know who you used to be. Girl, you used to bounce around town. You smoked this. You used to do that. You used to be hating the church. And now you're sitting in church acting all that. You say, yeah, because I've been clothed and my mind's been changed. I met the Redeemer. Amen. You keep calling me what I used to be. I don't answer. I don't get mail there anymore. You can text me. I discontinued my number. I live somewhere else. I am someone else. I don't, this is not even my home here. My home's laid up beyond the blue. Yeah, I've changed. That demon wants to keep telling you about your past. You just remind him of his future. 
Say, I heard one third of y'all and Satan is going to be cast into the lake of fire. You're going to burn, baby. Burn. Don't feel sorry for me to say it. Burn. Get facial with it. Verbal with it. You're going to burn. Get all that in there. I mean, rub it in his face. Every time he tells you who you used to be, you tell him who you are today. And everybody said, Amen. what a miracle. What a miracle. Jesus changed them. That's how you know the Lord is real. That's how what the that's what the Lord does. You cannot meet Jesus and remain the same. Let me tell you something. If you are still doing whatever you were doing before you met the Lord that's not right or righteous and you say that you're saved, there's something wrong with you. I'm not going to say you're perfect because I'm not perfect. But if you can sin the way you used to sin and enjoy it, as long as a preacher don't see you or nobody in church sees you, there's something wrong with you. See, you are who you are when no one's looking around. That's the person that God talks about. That's the person that the angels see is the person when no one else is around, that's who you really are. Reputation is what people say you are. And I want to say something to you. If you've really been changed, you're going to act different. You're going to talk different. God's going to get a hold of your tongue. You're not going to say GD and MF and I'll whip your... You're not going to say all that and feel good. You're not going, I'm not going to say you won't say that, but I'm going to say the Holy Spirit's going to say, I'm going to cut your little tongue out. He, I mean, I don't know if he's going to say that, but he, he'll put his finger on you. No, 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 no. And your mama don't have to call you and your friend don't have to tell you like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. There's going to be a change. He was changed and he was clothed. I love this. You, you say, why that? Why that? Why clothes? Well, think about it. He was naked. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he was naked. So, so what are you saying? I'm saying God saved him on the inside. And when God saves you on the inside and there's a change, you're going to act different on the outside. See, he was clothed. He went, oh, my soul, I'm naked. God says, yeah, that boy, that's bad exposure. Y'all get him some clothes, and they put some clothes. You remember when Eve, when Eve was in Adam, they was hiding behind a fig, fig leaf? You remember that? You remember that? And, and they said, well, we're naked, God. He said, who told you you were naked? So God made the first clothes. God made the first clothes. He said, get that fig leaf off you. That thing's rotting and deteriorating anyway. You're trying to cover up something. And he clothed us. God changes you on the inside, you're going to start acting differently on the outside. That character of Christ is going to start coming through. Then Jesus calmed him. He settled his mind. He had a peace. No longer is he going crazy. Now he's coming to Christ. But notice this. Not only was he changed and clothed and calm. This is beautiful. He was committed. I love this. The people of that region was afraid of Jesus. And they were angry at him too because he cast those demons into the swine. Stay with me. And the price of bacon was about to go up. <laughs> yeah. And there were going to be no more pork chops. True story. And you got all of our pigs now, Jesus. You got them all in this sea over here. I tell you what, I liked your little sermon. You know, I liked that little three points in a poem. That really, that really you know, kind of made me feel good. I like the way you preach. You, you're always kind of relevant. You're happy, and I like that. I like the little miracle thing, you know, with the, the demonic person. Yeah, he was half crazy, and we still scared of him, but I saw you. I love the little miracles. I love your little sermon, but now you cost me some money. I know it got real quiet in here. I can hear the projectors in here turning the fans. That's when you know, it gets, that's when you, know you start preaching, when it gets real quiet. And, and so he, he, they said, you know what? We, we like, you got to go. You, you costed me something. Not just money. You're costing me something. Now, I want to say something to all the Christians in here. When you're saved, no matter what it costs you to serve God, it's worth the cost. Give God a big hand on that. And here it was, changing lives. When Jesus started changing lives and costing them money, they wanted no part with him. They, they said, get him out of here. He's done got into our bank account. We ain't got a pig around here. And we had better be careful how we treat the Lord. Now here it comes. Now I'm going to start pastoring, then I'm going to 
let you get out of here. Don't come yet, praise team. We better be careful how we treat the Lord. He might just give us what we want. When we teach our children that other things in life are more important than worshiping and the things of God, don't be surprised when they place other things before the Lord later on. When we tell the Lord by our actions that we are satisfied and that we don't want any more like the sermon, like the miracles, like the peace, no lordship, don't be surprised when He takes away what He's already given. The last wise statement is this. If we honor Him, He will bless us. If we treat Him like we can make it without Him, He may just let us. And so here it is. Pastor says, bring your kids to church. Bring, bring, bring your kids to church now. Well, they don't want to go. They don't want to go to school, but we send them to school. Why we send them to school and not send them to church? That's just a, I always sent mine to school and got real, you know, my face got disfigured if they didn't want to come to church. But we, we brought them to church, too. We didn't send them. No, we, we brought them. Happy, mad, sad, glad you're going. <laughs> You go, yeah, we crazy. If you get stupid publicly, I get stupid too. And so we, y'all want to get stupid? Let's just get stupid. No, Daddy, we'll go, okay, we'll sit there and behave. We're going to church. That's what we do. Because, see, I'm not going to wait till they get 17, 18, and 19 and call you pastor and want you to work a miracle because they're on dope and they're sleeping around and doing everything else they shouldn't be doing. No, no, no. You thought you was a good parent. God says, I'm glad that you thought you was a good I'm preaching now. I know, I know. But, see, now commitment's coming in. Y'all like that message when I was preaching about healing and miracles and demons leaving. Y'all like, oh, tell us. But when I start talking about commitment, but, but here it comes now, now, now. Are y'all staying with me through all these changes y'all staying with me through all these changes so so now now you want me to do something you you, you want to be a good parent that's good God says I want you to be a godly parent godly parent says yes no you can't have it I don't care what little John little Johnny's got a clavicle that's still in place but you won't it, no I shouldn't I shouldn't have to. anyway that's that's bad that's bad I don't I, I retract that all you Facebook people, I'm sorry. I don't remove clavicles and all that. But, but here, whatever little Johnny does, little Johnny's mom and daddy. That, but I'm gonna, I don't care if you act like a, a, a Comanche when you leave my house. But as far as me and my house, we're going to serve God. And I love my kids. They are my best friends. All of y'all who sat under me for years, do they not get whatever they want? Do I not, I'm at everything that they ever do. But we're going to be in this church. Because it's important. I don't want to just call on God. He's there for us. When, I, when I'm in a bad situation, I want to serve Him. and look, Train up a child. Train. It's, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's like a little young sapling. Train. I got a guide wire here, and a guide wire there, and a guide wire there. And why? I want it to grow up straight. A little sapling, you can bend it. Why, Mama? Why, Daddy? God saying, teach them. I gave them that creativity for you to teach them. Pour into them now. Don't get mad at them. When they say, why, take your time and teach them. And so, I want that sapling to grow up real straight. But if I don't train them... And guide them, they're going to grow up to be an oak tree and they're going to sing the song, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Now folks, I'm going to tell you all something. That is good preaching right there. But more important, that is some wisdom that if you'll take and get rid of being upset with me and take that wisdom and apply it to your kids, it will radically change your condition. You can teach a child... You can't teach a 17 or 18 year old. They know everything. They got pimples all on and one hair coming out of their chest. They know everything. But there was a commitment. As they come, don't, 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 don't get up, don't get up. As they come, as they come, think about this commitment. He said, Lord, he said, can I go with you? He, he said, Lord said, no, I want you to go back to town. I want you to go back to Theopolis, it's 10 cities, and I want you to tell them what I've done. 
Now here's the man's want. I want to go with you. Look, I appreciate the clothes you put on me. I was naked. I got my right mind. I, my wife and me are reconnected. I see my little baby girl. She runs out and hugs me. I love all that and I appreciate all that. I, I see how you restored me. But Lord, I want to go with you. If I got you, I know all this other stuff's going to be tough. I got to have you. I, I know what it was to be lost and broke and blind and dominated by sin. Can I go with you? That's my want. He said, no. He said, no. My will is for you to go this way. And here's how I know that old boy got saved. Because when a person gets saved, their will changes to God's will. And it's no longer my will, but thy will be done. And so he went back and he told everybody what Jesus done. And when you get through fighting with me about doctrine, and I get through talking to you about Baptist and Catholic and Methodist, you, we can discuss all that, but one thing you can't do is you can't explain my testimony and what the Lord's done in my, I know I'm saved, I know I'm redeemed because I met Him. And there's no refuting a testimony that is pure. When you go to court, that testimony stands up. And I want to tell you something, as you stand this morning, Jesus is here to set you free. And I want to tell you something, those town people wanted Jesus to leave. You costed me something. But that man said, can I please, can I just hang out with you? I love church. I love serving. I love, I love giving. Paul said this, it's the love of God that constrains me, not the law of the letter. I'm not worried about God beating me up. I'm not worried about a boat of lightning. I, I just want to love Him. I didn't have my right mind, my right clothes, my right life till He saved me. And I want to ask you something, sir. Are you ready, ma'am? Are you ready to work through where you are to come to Christ? Can you picture in your mind coming to Christ and Him radically changing you? What is your spiritual condition today? Can you remember the day when the Lord of glory came to you and radically changed your life? If He has, you should give Him thanks. Why am I holding back on you when you held nothing back on me? And if He hasn't changed your life, but you need to be saved, if He's calling you and inviting you to come do it today, you won't regret it. And if you're lost in the grip of sin today, Jesus can set you free. Do you need His touch? Do you need His compassion? Josh, I want to do something this morning. I want y'all to change this song. I want to go back to break every chain. And, 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 and I, I, want to, I, want it, I want us to sing it like we're living it. And I just feel like we need to do this. I, I don't know what it is, but I do know every song that we sang, we did not collaborate, Josh and I, together, picking the songs out. But every song sang to the principle of God set you free today. And I would just ask you to do this. Please, don't let Satan fill your mind. Let the Holy Spirit fill your mind. So as we begin to sing, break every chain. If you're lost and you need Jesus, I want you to come. Break that pride. Break that. Thank you so much for tuning in. Listen, I know you want to be blessed, and I want to be blessed. I want you to please do me a favor. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Stay connected with us. Let's become a family. Let's grow together and let's go somewhere on purpose.